Hi. Fades and transitions can be easily adjusted in Magic's Movie Studio, Movie Edit Pro, and Video Pro X using the Object and Edit Trimmers. In this tutorial, we'll look at using the Edit Trimmer. The Edit Trimmer can be used for adjusting precisely transition durations, moving or nudging a transition, moving an object to change transition duration, moving a transition by trimming, and moving object content. I'm going to assume that you know how to do basic editing, that you know what a trimmed clip means, and that you have watched at least part one of fades and transitions, or already know how to create and use transitions. I'll refer to both Movie Edit Pro and its new name, Movie Studio, as Map. I'm using Map 2022 Premium, and everything that I show here also applies to Video Pro X and Movie Studio Platinum 2022. I have the same setup as in the Fades and Object Trimmer tutorial, Part 3, with a photo and three video clips on Track 1. The objects on Track 3 and 5 are just there to monitor any impact on their positions on the timeline. The Edit Trimmer has one main constraint. A transition has to exist to be able to open it. The transition being worked on is at the left end of a selected clip. Right now, the three video clips are untrimmed. Using all tracks mouse mode, I'm going to create a transition manually by dragging the third video clip over the right end of the second video clip. And I'll switch back to single object mouse mode. I'll put the playback marker at the beginning of the transition. The timer shows that the beginning of the transition is at 41 seconds, 18 frames. Right click on a clip that has a transition and select Edit Trimmer or use the shortcut N. From now on, I'll use the shortcut to open the Edit Trimmer. On the timeline, the clip is selected, including the transition at the left end. The Edit Trimmer is concentrated on the transition zone. In the trimmer, the left side corresponds to the left clip, the right side corresponds to the right or selected clip. The left window Start Fade Out tab corresponds to the start of the transition of the left clip, the second tab to the last frame of the left clip. The right window First Frame tab corresponds to the first frame of the right or selected clip. The second tab End Fade In corresponds to the end of the transition of the right or selected clip. Thus you can quickly see the transition start and end points of each clip. The middle zone is for the transition. Under crossfade, we see the duration with minus and plus buttons to decrease and increase the duration. To the right are left and right arrows to move the transition without changing the duration. Below is object content. This is only for the selected clip. To the left of object content is the effects menu. Click on it and you'll see the same menu as clicking on the transition button at the left end of a clip on the timeline. Below that is a counter with left and right arrows. These move the selected object left and right, increasing or decreasing the duration of the transition. Just below is a timer showing the location on the timeline of the beginning of the transition, which we noted was 41 seconds, 18 frames. Just below that are the names of the two clips. At the bottom are some preview buttons. At the bottom of each preview window, there's a timer and a counter with left and right arrows. These are for trimming. The left set refers to the right end of the left object, the right set to the left end of the selected object. The left timer shows the length from the last frame of the left clip to the true or untrimmed beginning of the left clip. This shows how much the transition can be pushed to the left, or rather, how much remains available for increasing the transition. The right timer shows how much was trimmed from the left end of the selected clip. This shows how much material can be used at the left of the beginning of the clip, if any. Trimming the right end has no impact. At the bottom left and right, the buttons with the scissors are to go to the next and previous transitions on the same track. The buttons without the scissors are to switch to the object trimmer. 
The crossfade duration shows us 2 seconds, 0 frames. The plus and minus buttons do not move the transition or either of the clips. They only increase or decrease the transition duration when possible. The plus button can only increase the duration if the left clip has been trimmed at its right end and the selected clip trimmed at its left end. You can't make the transition go beyond the beginning or end of a clip. As I said before, the clips are not trimmed, thus I can't increase the duration by just using the plus button. Clicking on the minus button decreases the transition duration about its center. Watch the other counters and timers. They all change. Each press of the minus button changes the transition length by two frames, but the other counters and timers only change by one frame. Why? When you change a transition duration, it trims the right end of the left object by one frame and the left end of the selected object by one frame. One plus one equals two. The center of the transition doesn't move. This means that the selected object is getting trimmed at its left end in order to shorten the transition. At the same time, the right end of the left object is also trimmed. The location of the start of the transition has moved to the right by one frame per click of the minus button. And now there is some object content to play with. Now that the clips have been trimmed a bit, I can use the plus button to increase the transition duration until an edge of the transition has reached the real end of the first clip or the real beginning of the selected clip. To the right of the crossfade buttons are left and right arrows. These move the transition left and right, keeping the same duration so long as at least one of the clips has been trimmed. Since I reduced the transition length from 2 seconds to 1 second, thus trimming both clips, there's some material to play with, 15 frames according to the counters. Pressing the left arrow moves the transition to the left, trimming the right end of the left object and untrimming the left end of the selected object. Watch the counters and timers. At the bottom left, the left object trim counter goes to 30. At the bottom right, the selected object trim counter goes to zero, and that is as far as I can go. Note that the location of the beginning of the transition has changed. Finally, check the left and right images, both tabs, to see the start and end frames of the transition for each object. I'll cancel that and reopen the edit trimmer. The move object buttons can be used to move the selected clip to the left to increase the transition length or to the right to decrease it. The duration of the selected object doesn't change. Watch as I click on the left arrow to move the selected object to the left. It increases the transition length and changes the start position of the beginning of the transition. None of the other counters or timers move. Look at the monitors. Only the left object start fade out image and the selected object and fade in image change. That's because the right end of the left object doesn't change and the left end of the selected object doesn't change. Note also on the timeline that the object to the right of the selected object moves to the left. Upon pressing OK, the objects on other tracks to the right and below also move. I'll undo that and go back into the edit trimmer. As I click on the right arrow button, the selected object moves to the right decreasing the transition duration, moving the start location, and nothing else. I can only move the object until there's no more transition. I'll select OK, undo that, and reopen the edit trimmer. The bottom left trimmer trims and untrims the left object. Since the timer is zero, this means that the clip has not been trimmed. Clicking on the right arrow trims the right end of the clip and at the same time drags the selected clip to the left. The minus in the counter means that the clip is shorter by that number of frames. The timer decreases to show the duration from the true beginning of the object to the trimmed end. To know by how much an object has been trimmed, you would need to know the original object duration. The counter shows this only because I trimmed here, but if the clip had been previously trimmed or the edit trimmer reopened, the counter would be set at zero. The transition length doesn't change, but the selected clip moves by the same amount as the trimming and the beginning of the transition has moved to the left. Now that the left object has been trimmed,
the left arrow untrims the object, moving the selected object to the right. I'll cancel that and come back into the Edit Trimmer. The bottom right trimmer trims and untrims the selected object. Since the timer shows zero, that means that the left end of the selected clip has not been trimmed. The right arrow trims the beginning of the selected object, but the start of the transition stays in the same place and the transition duration doesn't change. The selected clip moves to the left and gets trimmed at the same time. The timer now shows how much the left end has been trimmed by, the same as the counter. This looks redundant, but it's not. If I click on OK and reopen the edit trimmer, the counter shows zero. But the timer still shows by how much the clip has been trimmed at its left end. Remember, the counters are there to show by how much you have made a change until you accept the change. Then they go to zero. The timers do not reset. There's an anomaly here. I'll cancel out and reopen the edit trimmer. There seems to be a bug in the right trimmer button as I can only click up to five frames and then it stops. At the same time as the selected object moves to the left, the objects to the right and below move with it. To be able to trim more, use the shortcut Control alt left button mouse click to move by 5 frame increments. The objects to the right no longer move to the right and a gap opens up. Hmm. Perhaps Magics will correct this someday. Another bug. The preview does not show a crossfade correctly. It shows as a straight cut. The FX button opens the same menu as clicking on the transition icon on the timeline. We saw this in part 1 so I won't repeat it except to repeat a warning that using a recently used template can cause a change to the transition length and some other parameters. Some of the transitions purchased from the store may show a zero length transition in the edit trimmer, even though a transition duration is definitely shown on the timeline. This is because the transition is actually a special overlay. There's a problem with Effect Transitions Basic, the blurry ones. The Edit Trimmer doesn't like them and won't show the preview. Three of the timers, Timeline Location of the Start of the Transition and the Left and Right Trim Timers, can be modified directly by double-clicking on them. Of course, modifying the timers directly makes adjustments to other values, so you need to understand how they work. To summarize, you can quickly adjust the transition duration and location by using the tools in the Edit Trimmer. You can immediately see the impact of changes in the left and right preview monitors and make adjustments at the frame level. That's it for fades and transitions. I hope that you'll now try using both the object and edit trimmers to help with your editing. Understanding will come through repeated use. Thank you for watching. Till next time, enjoy.